Hey guys, Rex here. So, I live downwind of 150 Minuteman 3 missile silos that are within 150 miles. Uh, potentially, depending on which way the wind blows. If it blows the way it normally blows for most of the year, it'll miss me. Um, but uh, it'll definitely hit me pretty square if it's blowing like it is right now. <laughs> um, in a major nuclear war, what would happen is that would be primary a set of the primary targets. Minuteman 3 silos are hardened targets along with the air base, along with the other air base that's in a different direction for me, a bit closer. Uh, that would also be attacked and the air stations and the radar stations that are just north of that. Uh, not to mention follow-up attacks to uh, stop the uh, rebuilding and restructuring of the country, which would be your fourth wave of attacks, which would pro probably happen, uh, according to most uh, war games, you know, four to you know, 24 hours after the initial strikes, if there's anything left. So I live downwind of a lot of uh, targets. Now, unlike most of your soft targets, like people who are around cities are familiar with the idea that most large kneeled Thermonuclear weapons are detonated with air, air burst, right? Depending on the yield, anywhere from 1,100 feet to 4,000 feet, whatever, to maximize the damage of structures and all that kind of stuff. Um, hardened targets like missile silos and bunkers are typically ground burst type weapons. And the Russian inventory at this time, I believe the warheads are 750 kilotons. They're variable yield. There's actually dials on them. It uh, adjusts the geometry of where the pill is within the warhead and some of the other uh, details on how it's uh, initiated. But they can dial up and down quite a bit on those. They can dial them way down and make them smaller, or they can crank them up and get more yield out of them, depending on the target package and what effect they're looking for. Um, but most of the Russian stuff right now is 750 kilotons that's dialed in for the hardened targets, according to the books. And who knows what's really going on, right? Uh, the Chinese missiles are a bit less accurate, so they would hit those, and they have almost enough for a first strike. They should, by 2022, 2023, have enough for a very effective first strike, a, a disarming first strike against the United States, if you read Rand Corporation's writings on it. And um, they have much larger warheads in the five megaton range. That'd be 5,000 kilotons for comparative, comparative analysis. Hiroshima was... Anywhere from 11 to 17 kilotons. Nagasaki was a little bigger, 17 to 21 kilotons, depending on what stats you read. Um, that's 21,000 tons of exploding TNT. Not pounds, tons. So a one-ton truck carrying a ton of TNT. One ton of TNT is pretty good. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of power. Um, so what I'm trying to explain to you is the dire, terrible situation that uh, a huge part of the country is in, whether you know it or not. Um, I definitely know if there's a nuclear war, it's going to be rough. It's kind of that way, depending on which way the wind blows, no matter where you're at. There are strategic targets everywhere, right? I mean, if you look on a map of stuff that's going to get hit, there are some areas that are pretty safe compared to others, but a decent part of the population of the U.S., as much as they tried to keep some of their primary targets very rural, are absolutely under threat to die. Horrible, slow deaths to radiation. Uh, one thing to consider, um, Rex, why are you so happy still? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, another thing to consider is with hardened targets like the Minuteman 3 silos that, are, uh, that I'm trying to keep track of the wind on, right? Um, they, they take ground strikes to take them out, and that means the radiation is exponentially more than an airburst nuke. Stuff that's way up in the atmosphere has very little amount of radiation. Stuff that's airburst has a decent amount, and stuff that's ground burst is a huge amount when it's right on the surface. So all that debris gets irradiated and thrown up into the air and creates a terrible, terrible, terrible situation. Plus, in most you know nuclear doctrine between Russia and the United States, they got enough stuff and they developed it for the reason of hitting us multiple times each target. So that's 150 bullseyes plus two air bases and plus a couple other uh, radar bases, right? 
each one getting hit anywhere from four to eight to 10 times a piece because they're all about pace planning, right? Primary, alternate, contingency, emergency. They wanna make damn sure if they're gonna invest in a nuclear war, they, we can't shoot back, right? If we um, hesitate on the trigger or if we don't catch it in time, right? Or if Biden's eating ice cream cone or whatever the hell, right? So that's the situation. And with the amount of radiation that's gonna be throw, thrown in the air, <clears throat> people who live here and want to not die, if they wanna live here, have to really concern themselves with safety measures, okay? Um, most old houses up here have either a, a full out concrete bomb shelter built into them, or they have uh, big root cellars, concrete root cellars. They call it a root cellar when they're selling the place, but it's really a bomb shelter because you got Herculecrete concrete buried under like several feet of earth and then filtered access holes, you know, and you store potatoes in there, which is a great place to store it in the bomb shelter, right? Because you might be in there for a little while. Uh, most of the radiation effects, the half-lives will occur in the first couple days um, and the first few weeks, yeah, it depends on exactly how it all goes down. It depends on so many factors. But after, in a highly irradiated area such as I'm in, if the wind is wrong, which statistically I'd say is a small fraction of the pie chart, but like, okay, now the wind's going the right way now. I'm watching the clouds here still. It's kind of a swirling action today, so it depends on the exact direction. But if it was to go down, man, I would have to stay underground for at least a month before I could even do short-term exposures on the surface to come outside. And then trying to reestablish some kind of a sustainment system in that world would be extremely different than what most people are probably prepared for. Most people's sustainment systems are based on um, electronic and mechanical devices that need lubrications and uh, fossil fuels and even, you know, intricate solar systems to survive. You're going to have to start thinking Amish. The well with the hand pump or the bucket you lower into the well and then you pull a rope and then it like tips and then you pull it out. That's the way you're going to have to think as uh, Amish, if there's even any animals alive to continue to farm, right? So, okay, the sun changed a little bit. So that's the kind of stuff that you gotta think about for a nuclear war. And most people are in a very similar uh, situation. They're either very close to a primary target or secondary or tertiary or quaternary target. Uh, the big cities would eventually be hit too in a full, full out nuclear war. That'd be part of the, just because of they do not want us to rebuild. They do not want our military capacity. They want all the support destroyed. Most doctrines, um, you know, pretty much state that. Not to mention Obama changed a lot of that with that. We will absorb a first strike. We'll just take, we'll just get hit. We won't even launch anything, <laughs> which is pretty entertaining, right? So having to stay in our ground for at least a month, if the wind is terrible, that's the worst case scenario. Um, it's survivable. You would probably die of cancer after a few years or have some kind of problem like that. It wouldn't be very good for anything. Um, but you, you could survive it if you're prepared. You'd have to have um, water in place for a month for the entire family, at least a month, clean water, because you can't just go outside to pump water. Um, and the water that will come down for a decent amount of time after that will be highly contaminated. Um, so you don't want to drink that. You have to have pre-stored water ahead of time. That's the biggest trick. A big cistern is helpful, right? Um, food, of course, you have to have at least a month's worth of food down there. And the rest, if it's stored properly, should be sealed from radiation if it's like in metal cans or properly uh, shielded or, or in a proper amount of atmospheres to protect it. Um, so that's exciting, right? So you got your water, your food, and then you got to think of waste management. Uh, your sump pump will not work without electricity. And so it depends on exactly how your system works. You might have to bag it. So you have to have the proper amount of construction bags for a family's worth of shist after a whole month of sitting in the basement plus a little extra, right? And it's gonna be not a very happy month probably. And it could very well get very cold after the first couple days, depending if it's a global thermonuclear war, it could get cold. Some of the models show it drops, even in the summer, down well below freezing for a decent amount of time. Um, I don't know if that's hyperbole or what. I've read the models, I've read the climate studies. Who knows? The only way to know is to try it. 
<laughs> if that would happen, that means that if it's winter time and it happens, it's gonna be like 150 below where I'm at, or 170 below for a long time. That would suck. So, that's the first part explaining kind of where I'm at with the whole nuclear war situation. It's gonna suck terrible. And it, even if you're like, there's like parts where that are far away from targets, if you are downwind of the stuff in Nebraska and Colorado and Wyoming, you're gonna be hurt. And if you're downwind of anything in Maelstrom Air Force Base, where the big missile fields are, you are gonna be hurting. If you're directly downwind of the submarine bases or any of the military infrastructure targets, oh boy, it's gonna be rough, really rough. Or nuclear reactors, which would all probably, people ain't gonna go to work. They'd pro, even with their contingency plans, a meltdown of a reactor is even worse than a bunch of nukes going off. So there's gonna be a lot of problems if there's a nuclear war. Probably like the end of civilization, you know what I mean? Probably the most horrific end of civilization type deal you could imagine, right? So what do you do? Well, you prepare as best you can and then hope for the best. The number one preparedness plan is the Father in Heaven. He told us this would happen. I reposted a video talking about the nuclear war in the Bible, there's a lot of places that kind of hint at it or talk about it. Um, he told us that if we are with him, that whatever happens is for his purpose and we're called according to his purposes for the good of even us, okay? And there's been times in history where his people had to suffer a lot, but it was for their good. So being connected with the most high is like the number one prep you can have. It'll keep your sanity on. You can make rational decisions and very difficult decisions without freaking out because your number one priority is not to be comfortable. Your number one priority is not to like just merely survive materialistically or in the flesh, but it's to be one of his children. So that's a big part. So I'm not worried about nuclear war all that much. Number two, if he has plans for you, he will do miracles just like he did in history he parted the Red Sea, guys. Parted the Red Sea. He told Noah to build an ark to survive the flood. He told Joseph to stockpile stuff for seven years. And he told us that all this stuff is going to happen too. So we've all, all of his people, it's been a popular deal. Hey, let's like put some extra beans on the shelf just in case. Hey, let's make sure we got like a wood burner just in case. Right? So his people are going to be pretty well set up, comparatively speaking, and most of his people in this country too are kind of on the side of being prepared in terms of defense and all that kind of stuff. And their lifestyle typically is they like to be more agronomous. You know, they like animals and farming and gardening. They're not like at the rap store buying rap CDs all day. They're like gardening. Or they're like trying to figure out like how to like best, like get the most like, you know, proper fat profile on a sheep or something like that. You know what I mean? So they're doing stuff that's pretty old school. So I think his people are gonna be better situated, not to mention the whole miracle situation, which absolutely is a thing. If you don't think that's a thing, you're a fool. You have not seen the light, man. You have not seen the light yet, okay? And that's fine. You will see some kind of light, one way or the other. <laughs> it's gonna be very bright. One way or the other, man, it's gonna be extremely bright. And I honestly do think but that, that's eventually going to go down. Is it going to be this whole situation right now? I have no idea, man. Are they going to light one off in the Black Sea just to kind of show people what's going on? Then everyone panics and miscommunicates and then they launch everything? Sure could, man. 50% chance, I would guess. That's what most experts are saying that are in that world. The professionals in the positions of power. Like, yeah, it's pretty darn dangerous right now. Uh, worse than 1961 by a fair shake. Um, but... Um, what about that can you change? The only thing you can change is your disposition with the, the, your vertical alignment with the Almighty. And then after that, you can make normal preparations. And where you can't do something, he will protect you. And if he doesn't, that was part of his plan, man. It's fine. Like, did you guys realize something? Did you know something, guys? Now, normally I would only tell this to my most, most beloved patrons on Patreon because we talk all the time, every day over there about this kind of stuff. Every day almost, like I don't do uh, my rest day, but every other day where it's legal for me to do it, I try to get on there and talk as much as possible about this kind of stuff and the good stuff uh, and the fun stuff. And we talk about rifles and all that stuff too. 
But um, I don't think that um, I don't think that besides keeping those priorities straight, there's a whole lot we have to be worried about because everyone dies. That's the main thing people aren't willing to face fess up to. You can survive all you want. You can prep all you want. You can be the most surviving prepping guy. Guess what? Still going to end up dead from age or from whatever. Or it might be ugly. It might be not ugly. It's just inevitable. If nothing happens and the world continues on its exact trajectory without the nuclear war and without the financial stuff or whatever, you are still going to end up in a nursing home and die. Cancer will get you. Frickin' some kind of car accident, uh, some kind of other disease will get you. It's just like part of the deal. You know, it's guaranteed. Almost, there's a few people at the very end who might not see death. <laughs> when, the, when the creator fixes things. You're still going to see the judgment, right? From a different set of seats. So what I'm saying is like... If you just own it now, own it. Hey, we don't live forever, man. What are you going to do with the time you do actually have? Are you going to spend it all just shorting yourself out on stress and all the shit? Thinking about how eventually you're going to die? It's a very common problem. Especially for people that see it coming. It's very stressful. Or it's not if you just embrace reality and own it right now. Everyone's going to check out. One way or the other, 100% chance, pretty much. So, how does that adjust things? Well, if you know you're going to check out, well, then you really need to reprioritize and start storing up your preps in heaven. Start storing up your treasures in heaven. Isn't that what uh, Yeshua, Jesus said? store up treasures in heaven where the thieves can't break in and where the moth doesn't eat and where the nuclear bombs don't burn it in half? Where the radiation gonna get, ain't going to get it? Store up treasure in heaven. Be nice to people, man. Help your brother. Help your neighbor. Treat people better than even you want to be treated. How about that? Rex, we're going to have to fight them off. Dude, America is in for a rough one. America is in for a rough one because we don't repent. We think that we can fight our way out of this deal like that without repenting. Unless we humble ourselves and turn back to seeking his face and repent of our wickedness, we do not deserve to be fixed and we will not be fixed. We will suffer of our own horrific actions and consequences that we have set up for ourselves. The reason our society is stressful and it sucks and we're about to nuke each other is because we suck and we haven't owned it yet. We have to own it and we have to fix it. We have to let him fix us. If everyone would execute general order number one and number two, love God with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself, there would be no World War Three. There would be no people throwing old ladies off of buses. There would be no freaking submarines blowing up pipelines with Navy SEALs on them or whoever did it, supposedly. It wouldn't, it, like, that stuff wouldn't happen. If everyone loved each other and loved him, like, above anything else, and loved each other, too, both of them deals got to be there at the same time. Um, Would you even need cops? No. Would you need, like, to worry about anything? all the shit that everyone's worried about? Wouldn't have to worry about it, would you? Wouldn't need, wouldn't need welfare because people would take care of the widows and orphans. And if so-and-so actually hurt their back in real life, people would come help him. And he could help them back by doing something different. I mean, this deal is not that difficult to understand, but it's almost impossible for people to execute because we are so connected with our pride and ego. It's impossible. It's impossible for us to get past our critical malfunction of pride. We don't want to be, we're too damn proud to admit that we need to turn our faces and repent. 
turn our faces back to him, and treat each other with love and kindness. Yeah, the big scruffy bearded guy with all the guns on YouTube is saying this to you. Why? Because it's the truth. You know, you don't hit targets. I don't, I don't, you don't hit a freaking soda can at 1,400 yards on the first or second shot most of the time unless you are actually, like, figuring the shit out how it actually works. And I'm not here to say I'm awesome. I'm saying that, like, figure that one out. Figure out what I was just telling you. It's true. It's accurate, man. If everyone treated everyone else like they want to be treated, well, how can you do that? What if they didn't do it to you? So attached to our pride and ego. Lucifer's malfunction. That's why we're going to undergo what we're going to undergo. We'll be corrected. It'll all be fixed. But it has to be done organically through the process that we volunteered for. The whole process of suffering and knowing destruction from sustainment, knowing good from evil. We have to know it firsthand, right? We can't just believe them. We, oh, well, I want a little taste of that, you know. Okay, are you sure about that? Oh, yeah, we, that's probably a good idea. Mm, okay, well, here we are. We're learning a lot, guys. So, I don't know. How to prep for a nuclear war? Align yourself with the Almighty. Make sure you got your water, enough water. How many... Three, at least three gallons per day per person. So what is it, three times 30 days? What is that, guys? 90 gallons per person for a month of water? So 90 times, I don't know, what, three people? What is that? Somebody tell me that someone who's good at math. Not that hard. Get some plastic barrels or get a bunch of jugs or get a cistern or get a water tank and keep it out of the radiation. Put some games down there, you know, some LED lights so you can play Monopoly or whatever, or your Bible would probably be a good idea. <clears throat> Bible is probably a good idea. Maybe, just, just you know, guessing. <laughs> like, if people ain't reading their Bibles when they're in their bomb shelter after the nukes landed on them, nah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you can read it now when there's good lighting or not, or you can use your little look-up tool on your phone, you know, to look up words and learn more. Or not, whatever, you know, just wait until after it happens. It'll be more... More old school that way, more organic, right? Literally, like, reading about people casting, like, dust on their heads and mourning for, like, freaking world blowing in half. Wow, you're reading about it, it's happening. Yeah, that should get the point across, right? So what I'm saying is, like, get your water preps, get your sanitation so you can poop somewhere. Understand that if you live in the town, the drains might back up pretty quick and your basement could flood with poop water. So either get out of the town or figure out something ahead of time to make sure that doesn't happen. Make sure you have a way of plugging it off or something, right? And then have your food and a way to, you know, have stuff that you either don't need to cook or have stuff that takes minimal effort and fuel to cook. And then just like calm the hell down. You see, I could do the video on how to avoid all this shit. No, it's not. Just, just plan on the worst. Plan on the worst happening and hope for the best. I'm all about hoping for the best, guys. I'm not a fear monger. I hope for the best, but the best might be for us to go through this so that we can know not to do it anymore. Would you want to spend a thousand years with people that don't understand all the stuff I'm talking about? I don't. <laughs> so we have to. We have to learn. And if we're hard-headed and stiff-necked, we'll learn one way or the other. If you guys like this talk and you want to support the operation, we've been in it for 10 years, man, doing this deal for free here on YouTube. If you want to support the operation and have access, exclusive access to more of this stuff, because we're going to get more into details on how to prep for that specifically. We're also still going over uh, different ways to see if communist infiltrators are in your midst, in your house, what to look for, scientific ways of like actually knowing rather than what people say does not mean anything. So we talk about everything, man. We talk about the good book. We talk about long-range shooting. We talk about, um, you know, how to become a better person. Um, meet us over on Patreon, okay? If you can afford a cup of coffee, man, or if you have internet service for your football channel and it can't even help support the operation, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Is this how you got to do it with the, with the Biden glasses on? All right. Um, love to see you guys over there. Thank you for those patrons who are uh, helping out because 
I wouldn't be doing YouTube anymore if it weren't for the support. I, I, just, I have responsibilities. I have to like not be a useless bum and actually support my family too, right? So we all have to be responsible. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bless you all. Have a good one.